I am Professor Muhammad Akhtar Siddiqui, currently teaching in Faculty of Education, Jamia Millia Islamia. Today's lecture is on unit number one in 501 on genesis of Indian education in pre-independence period. In this lecture, we are going to discuss I am going to discuss with you the brief history of development of modern education in pre-independence India. Modern education in India formally starts after the passage of 1813 Charter Act by the British Parliament. Through this 1813 Charter Act, the British Parliament assigned a responsibility to the East India Company that it will work for spreading Western light and knowledge in India and for that it will spend at least 1 lakh rupees per annum on education. It also asked East India Company that it will allow missionaries to enter into India and carry out its activities. This Charter Act is the, you can say, foundation stone of modern education in India laid at the hands of the East India Company. And from here, modern formal education starts in India for Indian people. Now, after the start of the 1813 Charter Act in India, there was a controversy whether this money of 1 lakh rupees will be spent on indigenous system of education or on modern system of education or a combination of them because at that point of time, many indigenous elementary and higher level education institutions were already operating in India offering their own curricula in their own institutions. East India Company wanted to understand the status of education obtained at that point of time in India so that on that basis they could make their own plans for educational development in India. So therefore, they assigned this responsibility to one Baptist missionary known as William Adam who conducted surveys of indigenous education in Madras in 1822, in Bombay in 1823, and thereafter after a long gap of time in 1835-38 in Bengal. In nutshell, the Adams report suggests that the indigenous system of education in India is decaying, it is very weak and therefore it needs a lot of support to sustain and to be strengthened. East India Company was not of course interested in spending 1 lakh rupees or a part of it on strengthening the indigenous system of education. But the controversy whether it should this, this responsibility is regarding indigenous education, modern education or a combination of them continued. In 1835, one of the employees of the East India Company was quite famous, Lord Macaulay, he submits a report interpreting the provision of the 1813 Charter Act regarding education saying what does it mean? He suggested that East India Company is responsible for spreading only Western science and light as a part of its responsibility through English medium, through government institutions and this education has to be given to select Indians, not to the masses. So, he gave it his own interpretation. Work started through that amount of money of 1 lakh rupees, uh, schools started get setting up. But people were not happy that this uh, East India Company is entirely focusing on modern education and the indigenous system of education is being completely neglected. 
every 20 years the charter act is renewed in 1853 the charter act was again renewed but at the time of renewal of the charter act in 1853 the british parliament appointed a committee of parliamentarians asking them to see as to what is going on in the field of education at the hands of east india company and submit a report now this committee's recommendations became a very strong basis of declaring a permanent education policy for India. In 1854, East India Company, based on the recommendations, submits its uh, recommendation that is called Wood's Dispatch. Wood being the head of the board of the East India Company, therefore he announces the education policy which is known popularly known as Woods Dispatch. So this Woods Dispatch is a landmark in the history of development of modern education in India. Many such uh, recommendations were there which were implemented also which were uh, given for the first time for the strengthening and setting up of modern education system in India. For example, Woods Dispatch said that there will be a graded education system of uh, in, in modern education in India. On the top of that graded network of education will be colleges, below them will be high schools and below them will be elementary schools. But the dispatch suggested that these lower level elementary schools will also include indigenous elementary schools. So, Wood Dispatch gave cognizance to the elementary schools run by the uh, Indian people on indigenous lines, on traditional lines. It also opened the doors for uh, grant in aid institutions. For the first time, the uh, dispatch suggested that those institutions who want to volunteer, who want to work for the development of education of Indians, they have their own buildings, they have their own resources. If they want, they can apply for grant in aid to the government. Government will, after satisfaction of certain conditions, will give grant in aid to these institutions and will supervise the utilization of those uh, uh, grants being given to these schools. So, the concept of grant in aid school, which is still there in the country, is uh, you can say originated by the Woods Dispatch. So, likewise, Wood Dispatch also said that in every uh, province there will be a department of public instruction and that department of public instruction will supervise modern education system in the, country, in, in the province and one of the activities of the department of public instruction would be to process the applications for grant and aid given by different institutions. So that kind of administrative structure is still there. Uh, likewise, Wood Dispatch also recommended very strongly for training of teachers so that the quality of education in schools could be uh, improved and could be maintained. That was also one of the recommendations. Many of these recommendations of the Wood Dispatch were implemented. Uh, but as you know, in 1857, uh, the first war of independence starts, and after immediately after that, the British Crown takes over the administration from East India Company of the country. After that, a couple of uh, committees were appointed, 1858, 1859, just to find out the reasons of. Uh, the mutiny uh, in India, one suggested that this is because of the uh, 1854 Wood Dispatch. The Wood Dispatch was not sincerely implemented, therefore there were a lot of uh, uh, grumble against the uh, education system, East India Company and the neglect of education, therefore there was a mutiny. The other report suggested that, no, this was not because of that. The 
the committee was doing its job and it, the Woods dispatch is not responsible for mutiny, something of that kind. Uh, after that, education started developing as uh, recommended by Woods dispatch slowly. And Wood dispatch was a kind of policy which was being referred thereafter also for many years. In 1882, the colonial government here, they appoint another committee which is, which is popularly known as Indian Education Commission. The focus of the Indian Education Commission was primary education and the reason why primary education was being focused by a special commission was that in 1870 primary education act was already passed in Britain. So, the government was interested in seeing as to what can be done for improvement of elementary education in India and therefore, this commission was appointed. Now, this commission submits its report in 1883 uh, and it was headed by Sir Hunter and therefore, it is known as Hunter Commission also. Uh, one very important reason of appointment of this committee was also that the missionaries was continuously arguing that the 1854 wood dispatch has not been sincerely implemented and education is being neglected in India. So, it was also going to find out whether the claim being made by the missionaries is correct or not and also see the status of elementary education in India. In 1883, Indian Education Commission submitted its report and it made extensive recommendations for improvement of elementary education in India. Now, one very important recommendation was on the policy. What would be the policy of the government for elementary education? Whether this education will be for selected few Indians or it will be for the masses. So, the commission recommended that elementary education will be for the masses. It will be mass education program, not a selective education program. And that education as a matter of policy will be provided through vernacular language. All subjects will be taught through vernacular language. And also that more attention will be paid on education in the states or in the provinces at the provincial level, the provincial governments will pay more attention on primary education vis-a-vis -vis the other levels of education, high school or higher education. A special mention was made by this commission for providing elementary education in the educationally backward or economically backward districts. Now, this is for the first time that a special mention of some educationally, economically backward districts is being paid for special attention for expansion of education. The second recommendation of uh, Indian Education Commission related to administration of how this elementary education will be administered, they suggested that elementary education should be administered in a decentralized manner by district administration and municipalities not by the state government. The system is still in vogue here. Now, why they suggested this? Because in UK, elementary education, primary education particularly was being administered by the district authorities, by the uh, municipal authorities and therefore, they followed the same model for India also. But interestingly, they also recommended that the local bodies can charge some tax for elementary education from the people and can also force people to send their children for elementary education. This is something very important that they have the power to force people, compel them to send their children for elementary education compulsorily. Third very important recommendation was regarding indigenous education system, whether uh, the modern education system will have anything to do with the indigenous system or not, the commission suggested that 
we need to do something for indigenous schools as well and they deserve some attention and therefore, uh, the government will work for strengthening the indigenous system of education meaning thereby that the indigenous schools will be linked with the modern system of education and they also suggested that gradually modern subjects may be introduced in the indigenous schools so that uh, their pass outs can be mainstream can be sent to the modern system of education. Fourth important recommendation of the commission relates to school administration. What did they suggest was that there is no need to have province uh, a, a kind of comparison among the provinces and maintain uh, parity of its standards among various provinces. They said that each province has got a different educational status, economic status. So, we have to ensure standard of education within a province and therefore, each province should be given complete autonomy to have its own curriculum depending upon the context of the province, its own examination system, its own schedule of uh, admissions and examination etcetera and therefore, standards of education within the province will be ensured and not across the provinces and therefore, they will they can have their own textbooks, they can have their own season based schedules, they will teach at the elementary level at the primary and elementary level in mother tongue depending upon the language of that area. Fifth very important and relevant recommendation was regarding teacher training most important thing which is responsible for quality of education. So, they said that there is a need to open more normal schools so that adequate number of trained teachers are available for quality elementary education and for that they suggested that we need to have more funds so that uh, more normal schools could be open more train teachers could be trained uh, in those normal schools. So, these are five major recommendations of the 1882 uh, Indian Education Commission which was basically meant for primary education focusing on primary education. Thereafter, the recommendations of the uh, Indian Education Commission were implemented on a large scale. After a gap, in 1929 another commission was appointed that is known as Hartog Committee. Now, Hartog Committee was not primary for primary education, it was for all levels of education, but it did talk about primary education, how to improve primary education. So, in its report, they said that primary education has improved, has expanded after the submission of the report of Indian Education Commission, but at the same time they said that the expansion has not been satisfactory both quantitatively as well as qualitatively. They also appreciated the fact that uh, during this period post Indian Education Commission education has been uh, provided to weaker sections in the society to the rural areas, but still they said that comparative terms rural areas have been neglected as far as this education is concerned. Therefore, they recommended that more work needs to be done in the rural areas for spreading elementary education uh, through the modern system of education. Now, work started on their recommendation also. Uh, then after some time second world war started and because of world war uh, everything in the country was disturbed, education was also disturbed. Therefore, it was decided that uh, post war educational development plan must be prepared. So, in 1943 Central Advisory Board of Education started the exercise of preparing post-war educational development plan. That exercise was completed in 1944. In 1944, the Central Advisory Board of Education submits its plan under the chairmanship of the president of the CAVE, Sir Sargent. And that is why this post-war educational development plan is also popularly known as Sargent plan. Now, Sargent plan uh, 
in the very beginning said that we want to achieve educational through this plan we want to achieve educational standards in india within a period of 40 years as they are obtained in england today that is what is the whatever be the uh, level standard of education which is prevalent in england now that should be achieved in the next 40 years in india also now the basic reference to this the, the the country of england which was an industrial country ours was a kind of predominantly agricultural country perhaps perhaps was flawed and then they laid out a detailed plan of educational development in india for primary education they said that it will be a kind of uh, universal education for the age group 6 14 years and it will be compulsory education it will be free education the government will be responsible for spreading free and compulsory education to children in the age group of 6 14 years but at the same time uh, sergeant plan also recommended pre primary education of children in the age group 3 to 6 years now this is for the first time that in a plan for educational development mention of pre primary education is being made uh, and therefore this is uh, something commendable they also suggested that this education will be completely free this education will be for all all sections of the society and this education will uh, lead to development of the later levels higher levels of education and then they talked about high school education which will be provided through vernacular as well as english medium and then the later levels of education higher education they also recommend number of very novel things for example health and physical education to be uh, health and physical uh, fitness activities to be carried out in all these schools compulsory health checkup of all the children provision of some kind of midday meal to all the children in the elementary schools all these provisions were also made in the sergeant plan but somehow the sergeant plan could not be accepted the issue was that it was considered to be uh, designed to keep india educationally backward behind england and that's why this plan uh, was proposed to be accomplished in the next 40 years people thought that this is an intentional design to keep india backward in education and therefore there is a suggestion that this target of elementary education would be achieved in the next 40 years that is by 1984 and therefore the uh, sergeant plan could not be accepted although at that point of time the provincial governments had complete autonomy and a uh, lot of indians were there in the committee which was in in the cabe in the central advisory board of education which was given this responsibility of preparing the post war educational development plan meaning thereby their own ideas their own thoughts and their own vision was already there in the post war educational development plan but somehow that could not be accepted one and more very very strong reason was that the budgetary implication of post war educational development plan as submitted uh, by the cabe under the chairmanship of sergeant was very heavy and at that point of time the country didn't have that much of resources it was not economically so strong so that was also one of the reasons but the critics say that instead of keeping the model of england before us for preparing education development plan a model of some agricultural country or some uh, educationally developed asian country could have been better example to be followed for education development in india for example people say that uh, if at all you wanted to take an example uh, for 
uh, India, which was an agricultural country, and a European country, which is which was uh, agricultural, whose economy was agriculture, based on agriculture, could have been taken like Netherlands. Could have been a better example because that was also depending on agriculture. Or in Asia, it could have been Egypt. Or in Asia, it could have been China instead of England. So uh, that reference to England was not in fact suitable for preparing educational development plan for a country which was predominantly uh, agricultural. It is also suggested that, it is also argued that the idea was that they wanted to make India an industrial nation eventually and therefore they kept the model of England before them to uh, develop education slowly and gradually over the next 40 years. So, this was the last committee, this was the last report which was submitted, uh, which was not implemented, the earlier reports were implemented before independence. So, this was the scenario of modern education in the pre-independence period. With this scenario, we enter into the post-independence era. So, today we have discussed how modern education started in India with the responsibility assigned to East India Company in 1813 and then how it uh, went through certain controversies, interpretation of the 1813 Charter Act uh, by various groups, particularly the group led by Macaulay and then activities in the area of modern education were carried out slowly education got developed, modern education got developed in that period science education, teaching of English, mathematics education, all modern subjects, social sciences was installed, number of universities were set up in that period and we eventually went ahead and reached the stage of independence of the country. By the time country got independence, we had a, a a huge network of modern education institutions in place. We had our own curriculum of modern subjects, modern sciences, uh, modern languages. But along that, the indigenous system of education was not completely vanished. Indigenous system of education was also simultaneously going on, but the official focus was predominantly on modern system of education, though at the lower level, some indigenous education institutions were also being used as feeder institutions. So, this is about the first unit in course 501. Thank you very much.